right. Look at this. Our second factory floor. We are making progress, ladies and gentlemen, making progress. Yeah, yes. Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, we have a lot of stuff to do. If you look to the right of my screen and look at the to-do list, what we're going to do first is set up a temporary reinforced plates production, uh, just because we're going to need a bunch of those for what's coming up, including um, building a bunch of constructors and assemblers and Mark II belts. Um, so we're going to do that. That's a temporary thing, though. It won't stay up forever. Uh, then we're going to color our factory. We're going to change the color scheme uh, so we're not using the, the default boring orange and gray colors that come with the game. Uh, then we're going to go downstairs and we're going to set up some concrete pillars so we have more realistic supports for the factory. Purely aesthetic, not necessary, but fun. And then we're going to build an upper floor and then we're going to get started, if we have time, on our smart plating production, which is itself going to be quite uh, the task to do. Okay, so let's get started first with our reinforced plate production. So we're going to go press in. We're going to type in ass for assembler. <laughs> and then uh, we're going to just set this here. Uh, don't care really how well it's lined up or anything like that. Again, this is a very temporary thing. That's really just going to be for, you know, this set of things that we have on the to-do list. And we'll just run that into there. We're going to set this to our alternate stitch plate recipe. And then we're going to run, um, actually here, let's put some, uh, let's put some lifts on here just so it's not all the way on the ground. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to run copper plates into this side, and we're going to run, or sorry, no, um, iron plates in that side, and then copper wire into this side. Let's grab some power here, and we'll bring it down here, and hook up the power, and we should be good to go. And that'll start making um, the reinforced stitched plates for us, and give us a nice little quantity, because like I said, we're going to need those later. All right, very good. So uh, we got the first thing on the to-do list done. That didn't take too long. We're going to go over here, and we're going to check this off. And the next thing we're going to do now is color the factory. All right, so here's the thing. Um, if we press X, it brings up the customizer. Or if you press Q and you're in the build menu and you just click the customizer tab, it brings it up. We have a couple of options here. The default settings here are basically the default colors for your factory, your foundations, and your pipes. We'll be working with pipes later on. Uh, the factory basically applies to walls, ceilings, and machines. Um, foundation applies, of course, to foundations. If we change any of these things, and it changes everything um, for, uh, you know, that's using these default colors, okay? Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go to edit. Actually, hold on. Let's come back to that. Um, the custom swatch allows you to create your own color scheme, um, you know, for, for different... Um, colors uh, of swatches and things like that and whatever you paint with this it just it'll always keep that particular color scheme and it won't automatically update if you change the swatch itself later so this is just a you know you use it on whatever you're using it on and then it that those items will always stay that color unless you change it later uh, directly okay that's what this does so for example you know we got this kind of blue and green thing going on if we select this color for the custom swatch and then we paint that foundation and now it uses that color and then um, that foundation will always stay that color forever unless we change this foundation itself now if that's a little confusing it'll make more sense in just a second if we go into here now we have these re these regular categories of swatches now these guys we can edit the colors on these but um, anything that we apply swatch one to will always update to whatever color scheme we give swatch one. Um, and that's different because the custom swatch applies to whatever you put it on and then that will never change. It will always stay this color forever unless I change this tile again later. But if we use, um, if we use one of the regulars, so let's just use the first one here, and we color, say, those first two foundations with this kind of lighter blue scheme, 
but then we go in and we change swatch one to something else uh, so let's make it you know more of a green color and we update it see how these two tiles updated to the swatch so another way of thinking of it is um, we've we haven't applied these colors to those tiles rather we've applied swatch one to those tiles and whatever swatch one is is what these tiles will always be okay so that's how all of that works uh, in terms of the colors and the, and then you know later on when we get more things from the awesome shop we'll have some textures and some symbols and other things we can play with now too but uh, we're kind of limited just to the default stuff right at the moment very good okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back into um, here and we're going to just choose uh, the default swatch and put these back the way that they were and we're going to color our entire factory with a different color scheme um, because I want something other than just, you know, the, the usual orange and, and light gray color that, uh, you know, is just the default. So let's press the X key. Uh, we're going to go to the factory swatch here. And what I would like to do with this is I'd like to um, have our default settings be kind of like a lime green, maybe a little more green than lime on the primary color. And then I want the... Um, uh, the secondary color to be like a really dark gray, almost a charcoal, maybe like that, okay? And then if we click select color, it'll update everything to that color scheme, um, everything except for the foundations and pipes. So now, now we have kind of a, a green and gray color scheme for our entire factory, which is pretty badass. I like it. Um, all right, now I also want to change the color of the tiles. Uh, so let's press the X key. And I just want the, these to be a little bit darker. Um, so we're just going to, I don't think a secondary color applies to the tile, to the foundations at all. It might apply to other things, um, you know, other types of foundations later on, but it's usually just the primary color that affects the foundations. Um, so this is kind of a terrible time for me to be working with colors because it's dark now, but <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to darken this. I don't want to make it pure black, but I want to make it like a really dark, almost a charcoal, you know, a type of color. And then if we select that, um, again, it it's difficult to see it right now because it got dark on us, but we, we just darkened these foundations quite a bit more than what they were before. All right, so that's going to be our default color scheme. Uh, at least for this factory and then we'll you know we can always you know play with that stuff later on um, you know a as we build other factories and other locations and that sort of thing one of the things I thought about maybe doing and I haven't decided for sure if I'm gonna do this but you know right now we're on on biofuel and you know green is kind of a, a bio color and so when we're on biofuel we'll use green and then when we switch to coal you know maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll go with the black and white scheme and when we switch to oil, maybe we'll go with like a, you know, a navy blue scheme. And when we switch to um, uh, nuclear power, you know, then maybe we'll do, I don't know, yellow or maybe a fluorescent green or something. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> uh, we can have some fun with it, though. All right. So good. We finished that. Let's go into our to do list. And whoops, I clicked a little too far off the screen there. And we are done coloring our factory for now. And it looks nice. I like it. I always uh, liked the green and black color scheme. Looks badass. Okay. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go downstairs and we're going to start working with concrete pillars. Um, and as a part of that process, I'm going to I'm going to remove um, this whole ramp scheme here, and we're going to replace it with some catwalk ramps for now, until I can at least until I can afford to maybe buy the um, you know, the double inverted ramp thingamadoodle off the awesome shop. Uh, we can't really afford that right at the moment. <clears throat> um, but we want, I want to remove all this bulky shit here because, um, whoop, hold on. No, don't take that out. Uh, because it may affect what we're going to do next anyway. Plus it'll make things look a little bit cleaner. Okay. So this is the, the middle of our road. Uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to actually change a couple things on my toolbar. So uh, let's go to our second toolbar, open up the menu, and we don't use these ramps very often. So we're going to replace those things with um, some other stuff. So let's go to our architecture. We bought this stuff off the awesome shop earlier. So these are our concrete pillars, our railings, our catwalks, all of that cool stuff there. 
And what I'm going to do in number four is I'm going to put the uh, large concrete pillar and then the pillar support bracket. Then in uh, five, uh, six, we're going to put the small concrete pillar, and in seven, the small pillar support bracket. And then in eight, uh, let's put the railing. And in nine, maybe we'll do the stairs. And um, I think, yeah, I think what I'm going to do actually is let's go back to organization. Or sorry, not organization, logistics. And let's put the uh, ceiling mount in the zero slot because we do use that a fair amount of time. Okay, so that changes our toolbar there. Now, if we go back to our first toolbar, I'm going to put the grommet in zero because we use that quite a bit as well. Very good. Okay, let's go to our second toolbar and we're going to choose. Um, actually, you know what? I don't want the stairs for this. I want the ramp. So let's just go into the build menu directly. We're going to choose the catwalk ramp and we're going to attach that up here. Um, actually, no, I want to put that right smack dab in the center. There we go. And let's um, get on to zoop mode. And one more. There we go. Okay. And again, this is this may be temporary. I might change this later. We'll see. Let's go down below now. All right, so here's the thing. Uh, we're going to remove these big bulky foundation supports, and we're going to put in concrete supports and do some kind of fancy pants stuff um, to make our, our factory look a little bit nicer. Um, the other thing that I want to also do is I'm going to actually remove this entire last row here. We don't need it, and I, I need to kind of do that to make some um, math work out for us. All right, so let's check. Uh, grab all of that and then just go all the way down as far as we can from here and grab that one and get it out of the way too and we'll do the same thing here and get that one out of the way excellent okay let's also uh, remove all of the rest of these this game does not have structural integrity so stuff can float that bothers the hell out of me, but this is just kind of a temporary thing. And so I just want to get all of this stuff out of the way so we have a clean slate to work with. Yeah, I don't like stuff floating in games, even if the game allows it. Just don't like it. Okay, so that removes all of the existing supports we might do something different with that down there later too but right now we're going to leave it the way that it is okay we're going to come all the way to this corner here we're going to select our large concrete block and i'm going to bring it out like this and uh oh i thought we were already in zoop mode and i want to i'm going to hang it out uh on both sides because if we do that, then it's going to make the otherwise boring rectangular building a, a, a little bit, give it a little pizzazz. It'll have some, you know, some depth to it uh, on the outside rather than just being a straight up rectangle. Okay, so let's do the same thing on this side. Um, let's go down here. And we're going to get right in the corner, and then we're going to back up to there and bring this down to the ground. That looks correct. Okay. This tree here, unfortunately, is going to have to go. Okay, so that clears all that stuff out. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our small support and bring it down to here. And we're going to also put one on this side. 
Grab those barrel nuts. Then I'm going to grab the small concrete pillar. And we're going to bring it all the way out here on that side and all the way out here on this side. And then this tile here should be the center of the platform. So if we count one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five, this is the center. Okay, so let's grab another large pillar. And that looks correct. We'll bring that down there and just double check it out here. Make sure it's ha uh, hanging out halfway. It looks like that it is. Okay, good. Now let's grab the little support here, flip it around there. Grab this support here. Uh, yep, flip it around there. There we go. Okay, so we got the first part of this done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to another support there. We're going to grab the small concrete and we're going to go all, all the way out, which is a, a total of 10. And then we're going to do two more. And then that should be... Well, I think what we need to do is we need to put these here. I think that's correct. Okay, and then we'll put a, uh, we'll put this here. Do the same thing on this side. And then let's once again go 10. And then two more. We could actually just go, I guess we could go three more. And keep in mind, again, this isn't actually supporting anything. It's all completely aesthetic. But we want it to look good, and we want it to be realistic. All right, put this here. Go down 10. Go three more. Set this right there and down to the ground support there and the support here and this should work out correctly because I I kind of checked it ahead of time let's just make sure I put that down correctly since I uh, okay, we can do that. Yeah, that's right. That is correct. Okay, good. And we'll put the support here. And then, of course, we'll do the same thing now going this way. Bring those all the way out. Let's put this guy in here. So we'll get it right in the corner and then come out to down to the ground. And then we want to be on the sixth block. One, two, three, four, five, right here. And right there, down to the ground. That's in the center. That looks good. All right, let's put our brackets in place. And then, of course, um, we're going to work our way back around the other side. Um, and I'm also, I'm also going to do one down the center as well. So, so we're going to do a, a line, you know, going directly down the center and one going down this side. But you guys basically get the idea. So let's go ahead and time lapse the rest of this. I'll catch you on the other side.
right, that finishes it. It's looking pretty damn good. Looks like it's got some pretty solid support, I'd say. And um, the only thing that's a little bit jank is what's going on over here. Um, so we could... We could probably get rid of this. Get rid of all of those foundations. I think for now, though, um, if not permanently, I'm going to still keep these foundations for our conveyor belt highway. But we're going to be changing stuff up around here, uh, too, later on. I want to do one more thing before we move on to the next thing. And um, that is that I want to uh, take our pillars here. Well, okay, maybe starting with this one. And I want to go one, two, three, four, five. Five up. Here, let's um let's just jump ahead for just a second here. Grab a wall. One, two, three, four. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna go around and at at least on this side of the building. I'm going to raise all of these pillars up by five more. Okay, actually, uh, let's... Uh, on this side... I'm not planning on doing a second floor on this side of the factory, at least not for the moment. So on this side, I think we'll just add, um, let's change to default mode. We'll just add one more. So it comes up over the top of the foundation. Excellent. All right, that finishes our concrete pillars objective. Let's go to our to-do to -do list and mark that off. And now it is time for us to build our upper floor. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to start right on this tile here. And I'm going to do one row like that. I'm going to go up four. And then we're going to um, do this. Yeah, we're going to do that. Now, this I'm going to fill in with windows once I can get them from the awesome shop. So, for now, we're just going to leave that open. So, I'm going to basically go around the whole perimeter um, until I get to that point over there and put these walls in place. Let's do some more time lapse. Walls in place. Now what we're going to do is go to our stairs and we're going to turn them this way and let's start them right at the edge of here and go all the way up to there. And then we're going to grab one meter foundations and uh, go there, go out there. So 
So for this little section here, what we're going to do is go into our architecture menu, and we're going to grab this T uh, catwalk T crossing, and we're going to turn that like that, and we're going to put another one right here like that, and then we're going to go into here and just get the catwalk crossing straight up, and that fills in these little slots right above the stairs for us. Um, let's also uh, put a railing there and maybe one there. And I might, I, I probably won't put railings along here until I know for sure we're not going to go up higher, which I do, do not know that for sure yet with this particular factory. Okay, let's uh, get the rest of the floor in. Look at this, our second factory floor. We are making progress, ladies and gentlemen, making progress. Yeah, yes. Okay, we can go into here and cross this off the menu, or off the to-do list, rather. And we are now ready to get started with our smart plate production. Let's see, how many of these do we have? Oh, look at that, man. We're making a shit ton of those. Okay, that's great. We're going to need them. In fact, let's just uh, grab them now. Uh, we'll take all of those. We uh, used up a lot of concrete, which is not surprising at all. So let's... Um, I'm going to have to climb up here, I think, to get it. Let's grab a couple more stacks of that because we're going to need more. Okay, so I think what we'll do for the rest of this episode, there's no way we're going to get the whole thing, uh, the entire smart plate, uh, smart plating production line set up in this episode. There's uh, we got a lot of work to do yet, but we can get started with it. And I think what we'll do to get started with it is I think we'll get our um, our, our miners in place because we're gonna we're gonna need more miners for this. So, um, we're going to set up three additional miners, I believe. So, let's grab two of those guys and let's make a third one over here in our workshop. All right, very good. And let's head on out this way. And I want to actually... Okay, I want to change a couple things here while we're here. I want to put one of those in there and one of those in there. Oh. Uh, I don't think we want that. Okay. Now, uh, it just occurred to me, too, that we're going to have... We're going to have a problem. Um, can I... Yeah, we're going to have a... This is going to block something we need to do later. So, can I put a... Can I put a... No, you can't do a side grommet. Okay. So, this is... We're going to have to take this out because it's going to block stuff that we got to do. So I guess what we could do realistically with this is um, see if we can Yeah, we're going to need to hold that over out some more. Well, we don't... Technically, we don't need to... I mean, technically, we don't need to do any of this stuff. Okay. 
let's do this. Let me put that flush with that, huh? Let's try it again. So it should let me put a flush with that. It's still not comp Oh yeah, it's lined up now. Okay. Um let's do zoop. Yeah, that's close enough. Okay, yeah, so we're going to have to do that because uh, obviously we have an opening that we have to use here. Let's put you there. So we don't have any floating stuff. We don't like floaters. All right, so now what we're going to do here, we'll come back and, and fix that up later. Okay, so let's... Uh, let's take care of our our copper first so for what we're gonna do uh, we don't need we only need one more um, copper uh, miner for now okay so let's hold down control make sure that's on the global grid and we'll put those in place okay let's grab a miner and you need to place this on a resource. I am placing it on a resource node. Why are you not working? It's worked earlier when I did it. Okay, I think what we have to do is we have to have some of the ore exposed. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. And that is facing the direction that we want it to go. So if you run into that problem, um, you just need to make sure you can see some of the ore so it knows, I guess you're telling it, hey, this is where I want you to go. Um, and we don't actually need th that stuff at all. We can just take it off. Can't do anything about that because when you place miners on ore nodes like this, it, it aligns itself to the node, not to the global grid. That does look kind of jank though, doesn't it, sticking out like that. So maybe we will just keep those in place too. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to add another conveyor uh, stack onto here. Yeah, I think so. All right, and I think uh, for this, we're going to put a lift here. And that should be the right height for getting around to over there. All right. So now what we're going to do is come out here. I'm going to actually put some more foundations down just if for no other reason, just temporarily so we can make sure we're getting this as straight as possible. Sometimes you can't get it perfectly straight just because of the way the miner is setting, but this will help. All right. So let's grab the belt, bring it out of here, bring it to there, and then back to, and then raise it up to. And then can we do this? Looks pretty damn good to me. get rid of this um i would like there to be some support on this though just just for the hell of it so for aesthetic reasons not for prac er, for required reasons
Okay, so um, when we when we set this uh, thing up, we're gonna need to underclock it a little bit, but I don't remember off the top of my head um, what that underclock needs to be at the moment. So we will we'll come back out here and do that when the time is ready. Let's also grab this power line and bring it to hopefully that doesn't clip into there nope it clears it okay let's take this power line off and this one can go there and go here so I'm just gonna let this run at full capacity for now we'll we'll down clock it later once we kind of know what we need to do with it all right now we're, what we're going to do is we're just going to come along and do double stacks on all of these okay i'm going to cut this line here And just run that into there for the moment and let's start running this line back oh. let's just go back here and start it from here one of you guys were telling me in the comments I can Flip the belt around with the middle mouse key, but uh, I haven't actually tested that, so I don't want to try it on camera. <laughs> yeah, we might need to, I don't know if this corner is going to behave. No, it's not. Okay, so what we need to do here is we need to go to this way. And... Um, take that belt back off and bring this into here and then it should go around there with a nice 90 then we can put this back and we can take these two back off okay looking good okay so once the the copper ore gets down here then it'll just resume feeding our existing copper machines and then I'm going to use this lower one for the new stuff um, once we we're ready for it okay I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take this any further for now we'll, we'll work on that later Let's get the iron, uh, the two iron ones going. Okay, so we're going to do these here. Let's just bring this all out to here. Uh, watch out, bird. Let's go to minor and we'll put you there and I think we'll just put you there. Let's fill that in too and fill that in. Okay, that's good. Okay, so both of these we're going to merge together. Uh, so I think what I want to do is 
put the merger maybe coming off of this one. So the thing about this is because, like I was saying earlier, it, it sets the mine uh, the miner based upon the position of the node and not the position of the grid. So this isn't going to be a perfect 90. And there's not there's not really anything we can do about that. As far as I know, anyways. Oh shit, I don't want to go that far. So we're just going to come down the center of this foundation. Um, and actually, yeah, I think I'm going to come all the way to here and then back to and then run that down that way. Okay. Now, let's grab a merger. And we want the output to go that direction. Press control so that's lined up. And then run this into here. And again, it's not perfectly straight because I, yeah, I, I think that's probably the best we're going to be able to do because if I move the merger over this way one click, then I think it's going to be a little bit too far to the right. So now it's just a little too far to the left. I mean, we can try it, I guess. Um, okay, let's take this back off. But I think we're going to run into the same problem. It's just going to be too far the other direction. If we come one... Yeah, one that way. Yep, same problem. In fact, that looks almost worse. So let's go back to the way we had it. What the hell did I just do there? Don't do that. Yeah, that looks okay. Okay. All right. Good. Um, now, both of you, of course, are going to be doing iron, but we're also going to have to... Um, we're going to underclock these later. But we'll worry about that later. Okay. Now, let's um, get some power over here. So, if we... Let's go on this seam here. Maybe we'll come about halfway between both of those on this. Okay, that powers those guys up. All right, now, this belt coming out of the merger is going to actually need to be a Mark II belt because it's going to be transporting more than 60 or per second once we get everything set up. So let's grab whatever we have in here for smart plates. Uh, I'm sorry, for reinforced plates. And um, if we go to Mark II Logistics, yeah, that's all that needs is just reinforced plates. Hopefully, hopefully that'll be enough. So if you already have um, a Mark I belt in place, you can just select the next level and click on it, and it'll automatically upgrade. Oh, you know what, though? Okay, hold on. This needs to be a Mark II, but this needs to be a Mark I. So, again, this belt is basically twice the speed of, of the Mark I. This is 120 product per minute. These are only 60 per minute. Okay. So now we're Mark II all the way 
down the line here. And we'll just take it that far for the moment. All right. Awesome. We made some damn good progress today. Our factory's looking cool. Added some sexy green color to it and some sexy concrete pillars for more structural support. I think it's looking great. And, uh, yep, yeah, so this is going to be our stopping point for this episode. And the plan, of course, will be to just pick up right where we left off in the next episode and start planning out our smart plating um, production line. Now, the goal for the smart plating is to, uh, first of all, you know, manufacture 50 of them for the space elevator. But after we do that, after we get those 50, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start feeding them into to the awesome sink. And, you know, because we're still, you know, pretty early game here, uh, the smart plating should get us a, a nice little bunch of coupons that we can use because there's a lot more things I want to get out of the store, uh, you know, to continue our factory builds and pretty much everything else we want to do. Uh, like, for example, I want to get the the uh, windowed walls and we need gates and we need conveyor walls that you can let you know you can run conveyor belts through the wall that kind of thing the doors ramps all that good stuff um coming up so uh, i want to get the uh the frames here the you know like the girder types of frames and probably these pillars at some point in the roofs and all that so lots of cool stuff but uh, we need to we need to be cranking out uh the uh, or, or we need to rather be feeding into, I should say, the awesome sink here stuff so we can build those coupons up. And, it, you know, the and it gets exponentially longer and longer to build those up as you as you get them. But that's offset to a certain extent by the fact that as you progress, you're making more and more expensive uh, materials, you know, too. So that's how it works. All right, guys, that is it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.